Hi everyone and welcome to this video about the song Raging Fever from Naija. So this song is very minimalistic. It's a heavy drum beat, a heavy groove and a very simple bass line. And the song is about corruption, about dictatorship, power abuse and uh, the general vibe is, is anger. So there's a lot of anger in this song. And, uh, but let's go, let's uh, have a look at the bass line. Let's go through the verse. When foolishness conquers reason, weakness prevails, it's open season. They pray on the weak, the innocent minds longing for... So the bass line is, is inspired, it's directly inspired from the lead vocal. Um, the first phrase goes like, when foolishness conquers reason. So you, we have D, B flat, G. E flat D C D, and I thought I could use this motif um, as a, use this motif to build my bass line. So it's it's actually uh, ideal because these three first notes belong to the chord G minor D B flat and G, and then we have uh, another chord coming in the second bar, and it is D minor. So I I play a low D a low D as a root note of D minor because at this point uh, we need a root note, we need uh, something very strong to support the harmony. So in the first bar I'm kind of singing with the lead vocal, supporting him, and then I just play a root note, like a, a floor for the rest of the band. Uh, then we have on third and fourth bar we have a C minor. So I can remember that the song was originally only G minor and D minor, G minor, D minor, alternating. And I could convince Mahakwe to have a C minor on third and fourth bit, uh, third and fourth bar, so that we have a rhythmic, uh, 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 how, how to say, a harmonic rhythm on four bars. So something a bit that stretches a bit more than only repeating on two bars. When foolishness conquers reason, weakness prevails. It's open. So we have these four bars, G minor, D minor, C minor, and C minor. And on C minor, I just repeat the same motif, the same shape. I just keep it, but changing a few notes so that it belongs to C minor. Uh, so this is the bass line for the verse. And I just added some upbeats also. So you have a do 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 and this is to, to give a bit uh, of movement to the verse. A madman will have no pity, will tear you down if he's feeling needy. So I can see four purposes to this bass line. The first one is to support the lead, to be with the lead. The second is to support the harmony with some root notes. The third purpose would be to accentuate every second bar, also with the drum. So uh, the second and the fourth bar are accentuated with a root note, a very low root note. And the fourth purpose, which is also very important, is to be melodically autonomous. So when I, when I say autonomous, I mean that the bass line uh, can be melodical even if you don't have the, the rest of the band. It's kind of a, it's like a melody, it's something you can sing and that you can easily remember. So it, it's also a melody. So in this case, the bass is making a connection with every instrument at different moments of these four bars. So sometimes it's with the lead vocal, sometimes it's with the guitar, it's phrasing with the guitar, and sometimes it's with the drum. And this is how I can phrase together with every musician, every um, element of the music. We can be together sound-wise and rhythmic-wise. So in the chorus, 
The bass line is built in opposition to the verse. It came uh, after in the creative process and you can see that it's, uh, it's way more simple. So the idea is to, to, have, um, to differentiate it from the verse. Uh, firstly, the pattern is not on every two bars, it's every two bits. Only this rhythm and dun 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 So it's uh, it's way more um, it's way smaller, way tighter. Um, the bass accentuates also the first and the third in opposition to the verse. So it's way more grounded, more static. It's not, it's really like boom boom dun 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 dun. It's like a shuffle, but also very accentuated on the first and third beat. So it's more static. Also, you have a lot of root notes. It's very functional. It's not melodical. It's very functional. And uh, also another aspect of this bass line is that it's playing, I'm, I'm playing there a lot of upbeats and ghost notes. And the idea there is that, okay, in this song, there's not a, a lot of elements. There's not a lot going on. Well, there's a lot going on emotionally, but in, in um, talking about elements, there's not a lot of things in this music and not, not a lot of elements. And there is space that I can feel, that I, that I, that I can use to, to give more movement. And this is why I play all these ghost notes and all these upbeats on the chorus, because there is this space and I thought I could use it and also feel it with uh, with my ideas. So talking about this chorus, uh, it has kind of a swing, if I can say, and the uh, swing is something very subjective, and it's something that works with, with the whole band. But since we recorded only drum and bass, and the drum is playing mostly quarter notes, it's not very involved in this swing feel, just uh, sometimes, but very, but scarcely. Uh, I felt I had a lot of responsibility to to be really steady with this um, uh, with this swing and to to meet uh, a decision about how how this uh, shuffle is going to be. So it wasn't very easy. And uh, playing this on the low G on the saxophone is also hard, but it's it's worth it because you have a lot of uh, low frequency and you have this. Um, this root note that is very important for the rest of the band. At the end of the chorus, we had this small motif E flat, D, C, B flat, and it's just directly inspired from the lead vocal. So, yeah, it's, it's just um, being all together. And it's also a way to cool down the energy from the chorus. Um, the chorus has like this energy going, moving forward, and then we go back to the verse. So it's like cooling down and you can hear that everything is also a bit laid back at this point because we're going to the verse and we have to, we have to cool it down. So that, that was the effect we were trying to do. So now about the intro, I am just using so the intro was supposed to be drum and sousaphone, and there I just play the motif that is used in the chorus, like E flat, D, C, B flat, and uh, then it's about the vibe, so about giving the emotion of the song. So it's about anger, rebellion, and it, of course, if you maybe you don't hear it on your laptop, but uh, we were playing very loud in the room. <laughs> So there's again two details that I want to mention about this song. Um, there's this very place on bar 72 where the singer sings an A and uh, I knew it beforehand so I played the D minor, D minor triad on the sousaphone. But the guitar player, uh, in this case it was Hafid the drummer who recorded this guitar, I remember, and he didn't know that so he just played steady uh, C minor. And at the end, we have a, a D minor triad on the sousaphone, a C minor on the guitar, and then the, the voice singing an A. So it's a very particular harmony um, 
how many happening here. It's, it's a lot of rubbing, but it's not that disturbing if you don't know it. And on the very end, uh, I, I think we agreed on finishing on the third beat. I'm not sure. I don't. I'm not sure. But on the fourth. But uh, so I finished on the third beat, and Hafid the drummer he finishes on the fourth beat. But the, we liked this take, and we decided to keep it. And then the arrangement afterward, the guitar and the backing vocals, they adapted to it so that we could have, um, we could finish the song on the fourth beat. So you can hear that the whole band is finishing on the fourth beat. And of course, we could have maybe changed it. We could have um, edit and a sousaphone note there, like a B flat to have it uh, like a proper ending. But we decided to keep it a bit more authentic because the, it was the way that the album was produced. So we, we decided not to change it. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. It was about the song Raging Fever, about writing bass line and working together as a band. And uh, if you have any questions, you can write it in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.